hello there the topic on which we're going to dwell today is ever young the only drama in your syllabus by alice gerstenberg ever young is a one act play why is it called a one act play is because the whole drama takes place in one act it observes the dramatic unity of unity of time place and action Unity of time means that it takes place within 24 hours. The whole drama completes in, within 24 hours. Unity of place means that the whole action takes place in one place, one scene. And the scene in this drama is the lobby of the Point Siena Hotel. It also observes the unity of action, which means that the whole drama deals with only one act. Or one action among many other themes that this drama has feminism is one of them it talks about being young forever and finding love this drama has the theme of feminism it has the theme of being young forever it has the theme of loving and being loved as it is a one act play there are only limited characters there are only four characters mrs phoebe payne dexter mrs agnes dorchester mrs williams blanchard and mrs caroline courtney page as the drama begins we find that mrs dorchester and mrs payne dexter are sitting in the lobby of the poinciana hotel and just looking at other women other young women and and expressing their point of view you know women more than men women love to sit and normally women love to sit around and look at other people and talk about them maybe gossip maybe rumors but they just discuss over stuffs about other people's lives no okay maybe it's just my opinion then but in this drama we find that mrs dorchester and mrs payne dexter are looking at the women and, and looking at other men and talking about them when mrs payne dexter and mrs dorchester talks about jewelry mrs dorchester says that oh i've never had a desire to buy jewelry ever since my husband died this line shows that this mrs dorchester is a realistic woman who after her husband's death has no desire to please another man or to please another person and then they talk about the debutants debutants are upper class young women who are making their first appearance in the society looking for an eligible bachelor for marriage so they talk about these debutants and Mrs. Payne Dexter tells Mrs. Dorchester that these young debutants with their supercilious attitudes and their sophisticated conversation and smoking in public, these things make Mrs. Payne Dexter look old. But she is fiercely jealous of these debutants and she says that these things that they do will never push me back into the place of being a grandmother. She says she feels young, she feels energetic, and looking at these people, she feels jealous. Looking at the young debutants, she feels jealous. While, on the other hand, Mrs. Dorchester is of the view that they had had their time. Mrs. Payne Dexter and Mrs. Dorchester had had their time of being debutants and being young girls and being... Um, being chased by young men so she says that these girls they it is their time but mrs payne dexter mrs payne dexter is of made of sterner character she says that look i don't have their prettiness and i don't have their good looks but i am a do wager that means mrs payne dexter belongs to an upper class family a family that once ruled new york so she says that I may not be good looking, I may not be pretty, but I have the upper hand. I am a respectable and honorable person. And as long as I hold that name as a due wager, as a respected family member, they shall bow to me as long as I hold one breath. As long as I 
am alive, these young debutants will not overtake me. No. Mrs. Dorchester is a character who is grounded on reality. We will find out later on as we move on with the story. However, Mrs. Paindexter looks like she's fiercely jealous of the young debutants. Though, of course, she is more honorable and more respectable in the society with all her charitable works, as Mrs. Dorchester tells her, saying that, Oh, Phoebe, you have no reason to be jealous of these people because, you know, you are well known, you are respectable, you are famous. Mrs. Dorchester is a humble character, so Mrs. Um, they are quite two opposite characters. Remember that for you in this lesson, while answering questions, for you to know each and every character and their differences is very important. Mrs. Dorchester looks like she's totally opposite to what Mrs. Phoebe Payne Dexter is. Mrs. Dorchester is a back-laid woman, a relaxed woman who, who is graciously growing old, who, who, who does not feel sad that she's old now. She has children and grandchildren, but she's happy looking after them. On the other hand, Mrs. Payne Dexter is struggling to keep her stand strong. Mrs. Payne Dexter also tells Mrs. Dorchester that doctors are her worst enemies because they remind her that she's getting old. The next character that comes into the scene is Mrs. Blanchard. Mrs. Blanchard comes and sits with Mrs. Dorchester and Mrs. Payne Dexter walking with the help of a cane. And tells them how she is irritated with this young debutants. She tells them, everywhere I go, people put themselves before me. Men help me. Women send their men to help me. Chauffeurs help me. Bellboys help me. Waiters help me. Debutants help me. And she tells Mrs. Dorchester and Mrs. Payne Dexter that these debutants hop around me like small sand flies, many sand flies. All of them wanting to help me walk. I feel like swatting them with this cane stick. She wants these debutants to ignore her. But these debutants would not ignore her. Wherever she goes, they try to help her. They try to help her walk. And that irritates her. Because according to Mrs. Blanchard, their politeness to her infirmity is an insult. If only they would be rude. On one hand, Mrs. Payne Dexter was saying that these debutants are rude and they don't and they have the supercilious attitudes. And on the other hand, Mrs. Blanchard is complaining that they are they are too polite and she wishes they were rude because she feels like they're insulting her for her infirmity for her being weak and unable to walk without a cane. But Mrs. Blanchard has a plan. She is determined that she would get rid of this cane for the rest of her life. At this, Mrs. Payne Dexter is shocked because you've been walking with this cane stick for 15 years and now you are... You're talking about throwing this cane away? At this, Mrs. Blanchard takes out a book called Truth and Youth and tells them that read this book. It is all written in this book that how old you become depends on how old you think you are. The book Truth and Youth tells that every single cell in your body is new after every nine months. Each cell reproduces itself according to the subconscious mind of the person. And if we get rid of our illusion of all age, we can remain young forever. Mrs. Blanchard says, we just have to think it and be it. Mrs. Blanchard's character is important because Alice Gustenberg has written this uh, drama at the onset of women getting their right to vote for the first time in English society. So it is the outbreak of women and women empowerment. And Mrs. Blanchard is the kind of character who is exercising power of women to the fullest at such a time when women felt the divorce was out of question. She says that she just got her divorce from Mr. Blanchard. And that shocks Mrs. Payne Dexter and Mrs. Dorchester because it was unheard of. 
Mrs. Blanchard is proud of her daughter who is married to the Duke of Cobry. She had always known that her husband Mr. Blanchard was notoriously unfaithful to her all this time and she has grieved for more than 40 years and she tells her friends that i've never had the courage to get rid of my husband but finally i divorced him i have been a fool for 40 years so must i be a fool for the rest of my life now i am a free woman mrs dorchester cannot imagine the fact that someone is so happy to get rid of her husband and she tells that it's so funny because people like us who have lost our husbands like Mrs. Payne Dexter and Mrs. Dorchester we've lost our husbands and then we really long to we really long and wish they would come back to us and on the other hand you you're so happy that you got rid of your husband when people like Mrs. Payne Dexter and Mrs. Blanchard love to be free and love to love to have the upper hand they love they love to have control over their own lives but in a patriarchal society uh, women with mrs dorchester's kind of mentality is quite normal and sounds real mrs dorchester cares about the pros and cons and um what would happen after what would happen after an action is taken but mrs Paindexter and mrs blanchard are not concerned about afterwards they're concerned about right now here and now and their lives of course we can't say that mrs Paindexter or mrs blanchard is wrong they just have their own kind of personality which makes them different and unique from characters like mrs dorchester when Mrs. Payne Dexter and Mrs. Dorchester asks whether Mr. Blanchard tries to win her back, Mrs. Blanchard says that yes, he writes me imploring letters requesting me to come back to him. He is old now and ready to settle and he's ready to sit by the fire and watch me knit. But you know what? I played my trick on him says Mrs. Blanchard. I am not ready to sit by the fireside and knit. Instead of sitting by the fire and knitting, I would rather go out and gamble and play roulette. By the way, I gambled $300 away last night, she tells Mrs. Payne Dexter and Mrs. Dorchester. You never know what Mrs. Blanchard kind of person would have gone through within those 40 years of marriage and not being able to voice themselves out, not being able to um, get out of that imprisonment of marriage as we can call because in those days of english society when a man marries a woman the woman becomes his property but when women were given rights right to vote and right to voice out and legal rights that is when women started to open up and really felt counted and mrs blanchard took the advantage of this and got divorced from her flirty husband mrs blanchard happily tells mrs dorchester and mrs payne dexter that oh i gambled my wedding ring away plus you know what i get high alimony that means when the bond of marriage is broken the legal money that the woman gets after getting divorced she tells her friends that i don't need to care about financial stability anymore in my life she also tells them that i have loved only one person all throughout my life and that is not my husband obviously mrs dorchester says that oh i can't imagine being in love with someone else other than your own husband 